Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I hope that you're all doing well and staying safe. Today I wanted to kickstart a little three part series that I've been wanting to do on my channel for quite a while now. I am going to be doing a series on this channel where I talk about the key components of my endocrine illness because I get a lot of people asking me so many questions about my illness and how it affects me in my everyday life and I get a lot of parents and family members of children with my particular illness asking me questions. So I thought I would make a small series about my illness, just explaining the different aspects of it and just trying to simplify it for you. So for those of you who have never been to my channel before, I have an illness called septo-optic dysplasia. More about that in a card above my head and also down low if you'd like to go and watch that. This illness affects me in a number of ways. So one of the key ways that many of you who are familiar with my content will probably know about is that I have a visual impairment. I have optic nerve hyperplasia and I also have nystagmus. But the other side of having septo-optic dysplasia is that I have an endocrine illness in the form of hyperplasia pituitarism or otherwise known as pituitary deficiency. So in today's video I thought I would kickstart this little series by explaining what is hypopituitarism and how it affects me and I just want to make a disclaimer before I get any further into this video. I am not a medical expert, I'm not a doctor, I'm not an endocrinologist so I am not the best person to ask for personal advice but I do have 25 years of lived experience with this condition so I do have some understanding of how it can affect a person and also I have done some research into some very 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 reliable medical sources aka the Pituitary Foundation which is an amazing charity for people who've got pituitary illnesses and also the Society for Endocrinology if you would like to know more. I will leave some links to some really good information down below if you'd like to do some of your own research. Today, Sunday's video is going to be on hypopituitarism and then Wednesday's video is going to be talking about what is an adrenal insufficiency and then next Sunday's video is going to be on what is hypothyroidism. So if any of that sounds like it might be helpful or of interest to you or you just want to know about my different illnesses then please be sure to hit that subscribe button and also be sure to click the notification bell down below so that you receive updates when I post those videos so that you don't miss them. So let's start off with what is the pituitary gland? Well the pituitary gland makes up part of your endocrine system and it's the master gland which is located in your brain which can be found behind the hollow in your nose, so that's where it would be found. And this is the gland that is responsible for producing a number of hormones that help you to produce hormones that are key and vital for your daily functions in your body. The pituitary gland is split into two parts, the anterior pituitary and the posterior pituitary. And both of these parts are responsible for making different hormones that are sent to the other glands so that they can get on with their job and make the other hormones that your body needs. Now, when you have a pituitary deficiency, what this basically means is that your pituitary gland is not able to produce those hormones that act as signals for your other glands in your body to be able to produce those hormones. So what essentially is happening is that your other glands are on standby and they're waiting to take the pituitary gland order but because the pituitary gland is not able to send those hormones to signal to the other glands they are not able to produce those said hormones. A pituitary deficiency can be caused by a number of different things and you can also get it due to a number of rare conditions which can impact your pituitary gland although this is incredibly rare and one of those illnesses that can affect your pituitary gland is <coughs> septo-optic dysplasia. Although there are a number of other conditions that can affect your pituitary gland. So again, I will leave links to resources down below that you can find out more information if you are curious or if you want to know more. How common is hyperpituitarism? Well, again, from my research, it is quite rare. And the Society for Endocrinology estimates that around 300 to 455 people in a million are affected with this illness. So that means it is pretty rare. 
Now, the way that you are diagnosed with a pituitary deficiency or hyperpituitarism is through blood tests to see what hormones you might not be producing. And along with that, you can also be diagnosed through CT scans and MRI scans. Now, my story as to how I was diagnosed with hyperpituitarism is because when I was around 18 months and they were doing their 18 month check of my eyes, the doctors discovered that I had a visual impairment due to having optic nerve hyperplasia and then this then led them to do an MRI scan on my brain so that they could see what was going on and that led them to discover that I had an underdeveloped pituitary gland and then this led them to diagnose me with having septo optic dysplasia which enabled me to get diagnosed with all of the other hormone deficiencies that I have. What hormones can be affected? As I have explained this is an illness that affects your hormone production level levels and the hormones that your body needs to function. Well there are a variety of different things and there is more information like I said on the Society for Endocrinology. So we have growth hormone deficiency, adrenal insufficiency, an underactive thyroid otherwise known as hyperthyroidism, hypoglycemia aka low blood sugar, low gonadotrophin levels which delay puberty and it can also cause you to have a lack of an antidiuretic hormone called ADH. Now for me this is like playing bingo with a pituitary deficiency but because I have a number of these other knock-on illnesses as a result of having a pituitary deficiency. So first of all I have the growth hormone deficiency and I've had that since birth. I was put on growth hormone replacement therapy in the form of an injection at the age of around 13 years old and I took it at that time because they wanted to try and help my height you know give me a bit more growth alas I am five foot one that didn't really do much for my growth but I still take it as an adult and the reason I take it as an adult is because I have hypoglycemia and when you do not produce enough growth hormone which when in the bloodstream converts into a special magical hormone that regulates your blood sugar levels you can then have hypoglycemia so that is the reason I still take growth hormone because it's to help regulate my blood sugar levels. I also have an adrenal insufficiency. I won't talk about that too much in today's video because I have a whole video solely dedicated to this topic on Wednesday, so be sure to check back for that one. But in essence, the adrenal gland is a gland that is responsible for producing hormones that help you to deal with stress. I also have hypothyroidism, aka an underactive thyroid gland. Again, a video coming out on this on Sunday. Now, what are the symptoms of having hypopituitarism? Well, there's quite a few and I have a list here. The symptoms can include stomach pain, decreased appetite, nausea and vomiting and constipation, excessive thirst and urination, fatigue and weakness, anemia, headaches and dizziness, sensitivity to cold, weight loss or weight gain, muscle aches. There are quite a few symptoms you can experience and you know every single person is different and every single person experiences this differently and it is all dependent on what hormones that you are not producing so not every single person will be the same but if you are concerned the best thing to do is to seek advice from your GP and to take it from there. Now for me personally I have a variety of different symptoms and they fluctuate from day to day and this is largely because I have other illnesses that are related to having hyperpituitarism as I've mentioned and often a lot of the symptoms are very similar and they kind of go hand in hand with the hyperpituitarism. Now for me personally I get very tired very easily and I'm often fatigued, I need to sleep quite a lot, I also get excessive thirst as well, I'm constantly thirsty. I'm also pretty sensitive to cold as well and in particular I get very cold hands and feet but as I am aware this is also a symptom of having an underactive thyroid as well. I also do get a lot of muscle aches as well in particular my hips and one of my hips is actually slightly inverted so I get quite a bit of pain and when I was younger I had to go for quite a lot of physiotherapy because it was very painful but I also do get the nausea but this is largely because of my adrenal insufficiency and that can also cause you to be sick and nauseous as well if you are not taking enough cortisol and also 
I do experience the dizziness and the weakness as well as a result of having hypoglycemia. And again, this is quite sporadic. So some days I'll get this and some days I won't. And it just depends on how I'm feeling. And sometimes being sick as well or having an illness or coming down with a cold or some kind of virus can also impact my symptoms as well and make them worse. If I've had a really bad episode at night, so if I've had a bit of a hypo attack while I'm sleeping and I've woken up with low blood sugar, it can really make me feel quite terrible for the rest of the day and all I want to do for that rest of the day is have a little bit of food and just go back to sleep and that's often what I tend to do. Now one of the key questions I get asked quite a lot is can your condition be cured and no hypopituitarism cannot be cured at this current point in time but it can be treated. So what tends to happen when you have hypopituitarism is that you get tested for having hormone deficiencies and this is done through blood tests and when they have ascertained what hormones you are deficient in that then enables them to be able to prescribe you a course of medication that you will take to help you to make the hormones that your body does not naturally produce and this is known as hormone replacement therapy so there are a variety of different hormone medications that you might be prescribed depending on what you are deficient in now for me personally i am prescribed growth hormone injections to help me produce growth hormone i also take levy thyroxine to help me produce thyroxine i also take hydrocortisone to help me produce cortisol and i also take a vitamin d supplement as well because people with a pituitary deficiency are also prone to developing brittle bones so having enough vitamin d in your system is also very important as well so that concludes the first video in my three-part series on explaining what is my endocrine illness i really hope you enjoyed it and you found it interesting and it's helped you in some way if you would like to do some of your own research into hyperpituitarism i will leave some links down below to some really useful resources that you can check out if you would like to know more. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you again on Wednesday. Bye guys!